in a mana, in a reo, in a roranga tirama, tina koto, tina koto, tina koto katoa. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends, family, and most importantly, graduates, it is fantastic to be with you today. A very warm welcome and warm greetings to you all. It's always a pleasure to celebrate educational achievement, and my congratulations go to all of you. Today brings with it, no doubt, a great sense of pride and satisfaction, not only for you, but for those who are joining you today in your celebrations. And yes, probably some relief that it's over. It takes a lot to follow through on a commitment to learning. And I'm sure at times it was pretty tough. Maybe you sacrificed time with your family, with your whānau and your friends. Maybe you put personal projects on the back burner. Maybe you took some leave from work. Whatever sacrifices that you made to get here, be sure that what you have achieved today will have made those sacrifices worthwhile. The grit and resilience that you have shown on your journey of learning can be channeled in so many other aspects of your life. To quote former US President Barack Obama when he said it very well, he said, persevere, persevere, nothing worthwhile is easy. No one of achievement has avoided failure sometimes catastrophic failures, but they keep at it, they learn from their mistakes, and they don't quit. Those were wide, wise words. He said that in 2012, and seven years later, when it comes to learning, his words continue to take on ever more important meaning. Because today and in the future, learning is increasingly a lifelong process. It doesn't end when you leave tertiary education or when you gain your qualifications. I said you might, you might be receiving or feeling some relief in having completed your qualifications. That may be short-lived because the world of work is changing. And throughout all of our lives, no matter what stage of our life, we will continue to need to hone and develop new skills, acquire new knowledge, and develop new strategies to be the best that we can be. You are more likely now than ever before to enter not just one or two, but several different careers throughout your working lives. When I look at my own life, I loved my time studying, but then I realised it was the love of continual learning that contributed to making that so special. And that did not stop when I graduated. I'm sure I'll have several jobs in my working life. I'm not done with the one that I've got just yet. But I ask you to remember that there is no one pathway to a career. Different learning opportunities can take you in different directions. And as long as you're resolved to continue learning, opportunities will open in front of you. I know that the qualifications that you have achieved are wide ranging. They include degrees in business and applied management, early childhood education, applied science, social work, engineering technology, and the arts. Some of you are receiving diplomas in business, psychology, management, environment, information and library studies, design and decorating, and real estate. My advice to all of you is to look at the changing nature of work and to think about how the skills you've learned during your study can be transferred into the careers of the future. These jobs may not even exist yet, but you might have a sense of what they might entail because what you've studied will lead you down numerous career pathways. Transferable skills will be in hot demand. To speak just finally about vocational education and training, every New Zealander, wherever they live and whatever their background, deserves access to quality education and training throughout their lives so that they can realise their potential and participate fully in our economy and in our society. But it's also the case, I believe for several decades, New Zealand has undervalued vocational education and training. That needs to change and it will change. Work is ongoing to lift the status of vocational education and training, and we're in the process of building a stronger future for our politics and institutes of technology, including the Open Polytech. One that's set up to support the changing nature of work, 
that is better positioned to meet the needs of our changing work environment, and one that's flexible enough to support the skills and training that we need now and in the future. We need to, we need to be clearer about what vocational education and training is. When I look at the subjects you've qualified in and the range of qualifications that you've gained, I can see it's a wonderfully huge and varied mix. But what, you, what unites all of you? What unites vocational education and training? Debate continues on a definition, but what I hope unites you is that you're inspired to be lifelong learners. As you pursue your next steps as entrepreneurs, as professionals, and as nation builders. I hope that the spark of curiosity and the desire to know more that got you into where you are and into the study has lit a fire in you that will never go out. So as I conclude, I want to end with one more quote from one of my favorite writers from the United States, Alvin Toffler, who argued that the illiterate of the 21st century won't be those who can't read and write. They'll be those who can't learn, unlearn, and relearn. By doing what you have been doing over however, however long it is that you've, that's taken you to get to your qualification that you're being awarded today, you have demonstrated a willingness to learn, unlearn, and relearn. And it is ultimately the attitude that you have taken to those studies and those endeavours that will stand you in good stead for whatever comes after. My best wishes to you all, all the very best for the future, and thank you for the opportunity to celebrate with you today.